Greetings to everyone again. This is Jermaine. And in the last video, we explored the Earth, First Era cards, as well as the energy of that time period. So we really recommend that if you have not watched the last video in particular, that you go back and watch that so that what we have to say today will be a little bit more meaningful. All right, so as we have said in the past, when we speak of eras, you can see on the cards that it's labeled past, present, or future, past being first era, present being second era, future being third era. So today we're going to explore the Earth second era cards. And where we left off in the last series was about the biggest wound for humanity, which was the wound of abandonment. And how that particular wound is serving the entire whole in terms of the healing process for the whole galactic family. So now we're going to go into Second Era Earth. Right now on Earth, you are a Second Era species. So actually these cards right now are very appropriate for your time period on Earth. They are kind of a snapshot for what is happening on your planet at this time. Now, if you remember in the last video, the first two cards we explored were cards that were uh, opposites, in a sense, that were representing a cycle that you uh, traveled on your journey to integration. Well, as we go into these cards, the first two cards also represent a similar cycle in which humanity is stuck right now. Now, we're not picking on humanity because many, many civilizations go through the same footsteps that you are going through on your way to awakening as a species. So let's look then at the very first card here. It is card number 51, Earth, Second Era, and the theme is conservative attachments. What does that mean? Well, it's referring to the energy within a person's psyche or within the collective when there is much intensity and much unpleasant stuff coming up that you don't want to see. So in a sense, you can say it's a card of clinging clinging to the old way of doing things, clinging to your old belief system, clinging to anything that keeps things stable and avoids change. So if you look at the, the little image on the card here, it's of a person clutching a teddy bear, which is, we did not tell the artist to do that directly, but he channeled that image, which is very, very appropriate because that's exactly what the conservative energy does, is it attempts to cling to the old and not move out of the box, even though the energy of evolution is always propelling you to move out of the box. So there, within every human, there is this one part of the cycle. There is this one energy where you don't want to change. And we have to say that this is maybe conscious for some of you, but also it is an energy that is occurring on the unconscious level, very, very much so. You're seeing it in individuals who want to grow but are in a sense sabotaging themselves because they're not willing to let go of some very old, comfortable, though destructive things. You're seeing it on the collective level, certainly politically. There needs to be no comment about that uh, as you see what is happening on your world as well. But generally you're going to find that when this energy of closing or gripping or grasping is not addressed, the pressure gets worse and worse and worse. So 
if this card of conservative attachments has come up in your reading, how do you interpret it? Well, you can certainly interpret it the way we've just talked about because it's representing, in terms of the person being read, a part of themselves that they are desperately afraid of letting go of, even a destructive part. It could be an old belief system and that that part that is desperately afraid that wants to stay in the box is kind of sabotaging the evolution in other areas. Okay, so that card is pretty clear in terms of how to interpret it and it requires then some real uh, honest self-observation in order to navigate your way out of that um, loop that keeps you stuck. And actually you're going to find this theme uh, appearing in, as we go through many of the cards. Okay, so we're going to move on for now. The next card is the other cycle. Much like in the previous uh, video, you had the Atlantean and Lemurian cycles. Here you have the conservative attachment cycle, and then you have card number 52, which is the progressive desires uh, cycle or card from the second era Earth. What does that mean, progressive desires? Well, it has to do with wanting change so badly that you're not really in touch with the environment and what is appropriate change. So you kind of try to push yourself into change without really noticing or being honest that the type of dramatic change that you're wanting might not be appropriate at that time. So that's what we mean by it's the opposite of the conservative attachment. Conservative attachment being very closed, very limiting, very in the box. And the progressive desires is kind of jumping out of the box and running down the road when maybe you're not quite ready to do that. Uh, so always the middle road is the important step somewhere between safety and security and, con and conservatism and this wild desire to rush forward faster than the rest of the mass consciousness is willing to go. Somewhere in between there is that middle road and that's the integrative point. So right now, as you see in humanity, these wild swings in belief systems, whether it is on a global scale or whether it is on, an, on a personal scale, the, the overarching reason for that swing is to come to the center point. It is only at that center point between the poles will you be able to integrate the energy of both, thus heal the energy of both. So if you've gotten the energy, uh, the card, excuse us, of progressive desires, number 52 in your reading, how do you read it? Well, pretty much, again, much like with the last card, it's, it's self-explanatory. It's very possible that you're being told to look at your own Mm, your own willingness to move faster, perhaps in impatience, then the energy is naturally taking you. We find with a lot of people on a spiritual path, there's a great level of um, impatience by the ego of wanting to move faster and then trying to control the environment in order to move faster to where you think you should be spiritually, but you well know it doesn't work that way. So you can see how both of these forces can be destructive when they are um, allowed to run without the self-observation. They are, they are allowed to run without coming to that middle point of integration.
So if the card has come up in your reading, then take a look at yourself. Actually, we do have to say that this Progressive Desires card is somewhat also very connected to the Pleiadian card of Blind Enthusiasm. The Blind Enthusiasm card in the in the Pleiadian uh, first era has more to do, is more childlike, more of a childlike innocence. We would say the Progressive Desires card has a little bit more ego in it in terms of thinking one knows what should be right and charging ahead for it. So that's one of the reasons why uh, both of these cards are kind of having a war right now in energy in your mass consciousness because there is an egoic component in which the ego thinks each one thinks is right. So if it comes up, just look at yourself, give yourself the space to slow down and have patience. It may not unfold, the reality may not unfold the way you want it, in the timing you want it, but truly it is something that is not able to be controlled, so let yourself just relax. All right? Now, we're getting now to some very, very important parts of the deck, and this is one of the reasons why we have the card map behind us. Now, some of you might not know what this is because it, it looks different than these cards. This is, these are the Japanese cards behind us, so the color stripe is positioned a little bit differently. However, it is the 108 cards laid out on the grid with the underlying graphic that represents uh, the hologram of creation underneath it. Okay, so as we are traveling then on the map, where we've just been to number 52, now we're going to number 53, which is right here on, on the deck. And this card number 53 is the card of belief systems. It is representing the last stand, let's say, or the last challenge for humanity before they fully move into the awakening energy. Why? Well, we've said recently in a workshop, belief systems are kind of like wearing a pair of colored glasses. So if you're wearing glasses with pink lenses, Eventually, you get used to the pink and you no longer realize that everything you see is pink. Belief systems are very, very similar. That You've carried your belief systems for so long and you've carried them on such a deep unconscious level that you're not even aware anymore that you're looking through the lenses of your own belief systems. This keeps you stuck. And it keeps you very attached to your version of reality. So if we're looking then on the map here, number 53, almost halfway through the deck, yes? Number 53 represents the very, very last challenge for humanity before you move into your cycle of awakening. For most planets, when they go through their awakening process, this is the challenge that takes the longest to untangle yourself from. So this is exactly where you are now. If we were to say, if we were to point to a card representing humanity right in this moment, it would be card number 53, belief systems. Right now, you are so mired in your belief systems on a collective level and on a personal level that it's very difficult to navigate your way back to the one. Please know that this is very common for all awakening species. So even though you may not want to be here, there's no reason to beat yourself up about it. Okay, so if that card has come in your reading then. Again, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's telling you that somewhere within you there is a belief system that's keeping you stuck. And here's the thing with belief systems. There's conscious ones and there's unconscious ones. Most of them are unconscious. The conscious ones are often echoes 
of an unconscious one that has an even more stronger energy. So if you are aware of particular belief systems that keep you stuck on a conscious level, know that the root of those belief systems are in the unconscious and the energy of limitation that those uh, belief systems uh, cause for you are like a root, sometimes very hard to pull up. So you have to go step by step, you have to move slowly, and also you have to know that you cannot guide it with the mind. It is kind of like guiding your way through a tunnel blindfolded. You have to begin to trust your intuition and your other senses to lead you through the tunnel because the mind is not going to lead you. It is incapable of leading you. That is why it is the last gauntlet, so to speak, for all awakening civilizations before the shift is made. Okay, so then we go to the final card here today. Card number 54. This is the shift. The card is new consciousness. And if you look here, number 54 is exactly halfway through the deck. Obviously, 54 times 2 is 108. So we are halfway through the deck. And it shows you then that once you crack the code of the belief systems or once you begin dismantling them and owning them and loving them and integrating them, what results is new consciousness. So this new consciousness card is kind of like the dawn. The dawn of the awakening of the human species after you've worked through the jungle of your own belief systems, this is where you're heading. Now we said that these four cards are representative of humanity's energy right now. So that means this energy is coming. In fact, it's already here for many of you because many of you get glimpses of this dawn when you have a momentary uh, break from the mire of the belief systems. You see it, you feel it, and it gives you hope. So that is why this card is so important, because it helps you see beyond the limitation of the belief system. So if the new consciousness has come, the new consciousness card has come in your reading, again, it's pretty self-explanatory. It is probably telling you that this new consciousness within you is on the horizon, but it is always a result of the work you do to untangle yourself from your belief systems. Remembering belief systems are not intellectual. So you have to kind of go into the, the more primal energy of the belief system in order to dismantle it. When you do, the new consciousness awaits you. So as we do these videos now we've just turned a corner. We have just hit the energy of the new consciousness. So in terms of the process of separation from the source, the belief system card is the farthest away from source. Now number 54 you're beginning the returning back. You're beginning the integration process. You are truly beginning the journey home. This is the roadmap for humanity, and it's the same roadmap your forefathers traveled in their own way, of course, but the same roadmap for all consciousness. Have faith, my dears. Untangle yourself from those belief systems and that is what awaits you. Thank you for your attention. There'll be another series coming up uh, shortly. For now, we wish you much successful and joyful homework, yes, with the untangling process. And also we wish you much love.